All righty, folks, she's back. The concierge to small business loans, the one and only Bo Eckstein. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Thank you. So one of the things that I have seen as I've been out there trying to educate, mentor, help people get started in the real estate game, there's a certain set of folks that are hungry, take action and move forward. But there's also a set of folks that are just seemingly excited to be excited. They want to be around you, but they're not making any movement. So call them tire kickers, call them, you know, whatever you'd like. But you, as the concierge of small business loans, I'm curious, have you seen any traits about the people who actually move forward, maybe write an offer? Maybe they don't get the deal, but they're at least making concrete steps versus somebody who books a call with you and gets all excited and then goes dark. What are some of the, I don't know, deltas or differences out there? Yeah, I was uh, I was at the gym this morning. I was listening to a book by Benjamin Hard Hardy, and I'm a big fan of him. And he, and he was talking about this that sometimes you ha you have to take action. If you're not taking, even if it's imperfect action, it's all about the action. So I remember I had uh, was really into buying rental properties, and then like I got married, I got distracted. And then last year I was like, listen, I need to buy at least uh, I, I I said I at least three doors, right? Like I. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and, and so what I did is I created a system to look at deals. Yep. And then I, you know, once I, once it hit my buy box, I would outreach, I was just buying in another yep. state off the sure. MLS and I'd reach out to the listing agent. And within the first two months I had bought a fourplex and a duplex and I doubled my goal. I had six doors. Shocking focus and execution works. Yeah. So if you want to buy a business, right. Uh, you have to look at deals. You have to look at opportunities. So whether it's a franchise, I think that I think people like the franchise world because it's a little bit more handholding. You're going to get support from from the corporate office. You're going to get sales and marketing, and you're going to have other people in the system so you can pick their brains. So it might be a good place to start if you don't if you don't own any business. You've been a W two employee your whole life. It might not be great to go buy a business and figure out how to do all this stuff. Some people can do that, but not everybody has the skill sets to do that. Um, and so I think really it just comes down to taking action and, and figuring out what your buy box is. I tell people the same thing. I said, get a good book, like buy, then build by Walker Diebel. Uh, oh, I like he, that. He, he, he talks about, it's similar to one rent all the time, meaning he talks about the buy box for businesses, how to create a buy box for a business. So it's, it's just like your book is a roadmap mm -hmm. for real estate. It's for business. So I said, get that I book. Like listen what, to what it was it Audible. one more time? Let me write that down. What is it? Um, buy then build by Walker Diebel. Buy then build. Okay, thank yeah. you. Another so, book to so, order on Amazon. Thank you. Yeah, that that'll give you your initial like how to create a buy box for a business. Um, so let's so, poke at that a little bit because I think that's one thing. Again, you you're bringing a new area to my channel, so I may be asking stupid questions. But again, buying a small business, Cody Sanchez riles me up, gets me excited, I'm motivated. But just like real estate, there's so much out there. So this buy box concept obviously resonates for me. What are some of the variables, right? Because again, single family homes, I can do bedroom counts. I can do bathroom counts. I can do size. I can do price points. What are just, you know, two or three of the variables that somebody can take this plethora of small businesses and start creating a more refined buy box? What are some of those? Sure. Is it a brick and mortar or a home-based business, right? Okay. That's a big, big first step. Do I actually I like want it. office space? Um what are the, what are the hours of operation? Is this a 24 seven business? Is this like an emergency response, like a biohazard mm. cleanup business, like a crime okay. scene cleanup business where you, like, if you get called at three in the morning, you got to go out and, and service that, that, that uh, client. So I would look at that. I would look at like how many hours you have in a day right now to work in this business. I'm W let's just say I'm W2 and this, I got to start with 30 hours a week cause I'm full time and I need mm -hmm. to do something where I could scale it up slowly. So you got to look at like what, what you can actually put. And then also, what do you have available? You have home equity. You can pull a HELOC on. You have uh, the ability to get SBA financing. Is the business SBA financeable, right? Can I leverage that way? Most people in real estate understand debt and debt in businesses, right? We want to use debt in business acquisition and franchise because we're going to get a higher return on our invested dollar. So I think, mm -hmm. what does that look like? Do you have a, an old 
401k that could be rolled over into a Rob's plan where that you have two or 300 grand that's sitting in some mutual fund that's not doing anything for you. Well, what if you invested in this franchise or this business and now that thing's spitting two or $300,000 of cash flow a year? So I'm thinking like this constantly. And yeah. so like now it's like, oh, well, I can do all these different businesses. I can buy like a, a Jiffy Lube. I could buy a, 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 a Boba franchise where, you know, the, the, yeah. the drinks, the tea all these things, but really focus on like, well, what, what are your skill sets that you have existing? And then what does that correlate to in the business world? And also, that's also why I think going through the franchise buying process with a good franchise broker, and I keep on dwelling on this because you really see, they're going to take you through all different business models. So you're going to get a, an idea of what's out there because there's so much out there. Like if you just said, oh, I want to buy fourplexes, that's my goal. Fourplexes, utilities have to be separated well that might not be the best investment for you maybe single families make more sense in appreciating mm -hmm. markets than a fourplex in a tertiary market that's not going to go up in value so we're 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 doing the same kind of process of elimination but i think the real difference is is like this is a business with multiple moving pieces it's going to be how much time do i really need to put in there because i can tell you one thing in, in all the franchises i look at there's barely any that are passive meaning that i just put money in and it just runs itself there's a few franchise models like that but uh, i don't think many of them are proven now they're semi-passive which means hey you hire a, it's an executive model you put a manager in place but you're still spending 15 to 30 hours a week running and and running the business even if you're not in the day-to-day -day operations so you got to think about that and i think as you start going down this path there might be a business that you least expect most people that come into the franchise world go, oh, I'm going to buy a smoothie place. But really, they get in there and they say, no, I don't want brick and mortar. I don't want a $5,000 or $6,000 lease every month. I want to have no overhead and I want to have all revenue potential. Um, I'm not good at sales, so I want a franchise concept that you know makes the phone ring and sets appointments. Or maybe I am strong at sales, so I can do more of a sales role. This is what you're going to discover. And I think by doing this, it, you'll you'll eventually come to a process of like, OK, I really like this. But until you actually if you're just sitting on biz buy sell, looking at deals and never calling business bro business brokers or the sellers and talking and having discussions and getting the offering memorandum and the sales brochure and like why and then start going, why do I like this business? Why don't I like this business? And then you're going to come out and build a framework around of what businesses might be the best suited for you. Yeah. This is why it's important. I think a lot of folks need to reach out to you because you are the concierge of small business loans. Uh, you have experience both in buying businesses and franchises. I think you can really help guide someone who has interest, but no focus. Uh, I think a quick uh, 15 minute call from you really could set somebody down the right path. Cause again, I think you're right. I think, I think Cody Sanchez does an amazing job of getting people excited, but for a lot of them, you got to get the debt lined up and that's where you play, but you also can help people create focus because once you have a buy box, whether it's real estate or buying a business, you build that muscle memory, that, that consistency, and you build confidence in yourself. So Bo, if somebody wanted to reach out to you and get a little guidance, how would they do that? They go to boextein.biz. It's a online digital business card. You're going to click on one rental at a time and book a, a calendar appointment. We're going to meet on Zoom, talk face-to-face. Yeah, folks, I strongly recommend if you have any interest in this, you've seen any of the Cody Sanchez videos and you're like, I think there's something there for me. Uh, I strongly recommend. Again, it's a website, boextein.biz, B-I-Z. It is not an email. A couple of folks reached out, said, hey, the email's not working. It's not an email address. <laughs> All right, Bo, have a wonderful day. Take care. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.